Elaine Chang from Social Teeth, t tell me about what Social Teeth is about. Yeah, so, you know, right now, um, there aren't many ways for everyday people to engage in politics. And in fact, it's a really frustrating process. So it's kind of a situation in which people are either all in, and they're very, very devoted activists who either work full time on an issue or devote many hours to an issue, or there's not really, you know, a way for people to engage part-time in politics. And, um, you know, as of late, with the development of super PACs and the Citizens United ruling, that's only been exacerbated by sort of the presence of these really large special interests in our elections. So social peace is an attempt to give people a way to get behind really concrete messages and engage in that way politically and in a national conversation together. Right, but how do they do that? Uh, if I don't have a lot of money or somebody watching right now, uh, how in the world are they going to compete with the super PACs, et cetera? What, what, what do you have to do to get involved? Yeah, so um, the, from a user standpoint, it's really simple. So, you know, we rely on a core of sort of hardcore activists to create ads. And in the future, we'll also put together a platform for uh, more casual users to start engaging and creating ads as well. For right now, uh, there are ready-made ads on our site, and you can encourage other people to upload their ads. And you browse these ads, and if you really like one and want to see it on TV, then you can put $10 towards buying airtime. And we guarantee that at least 90% of your contribution will go directly to buying airtime. And um, we work with a very, very large media company called Aegis Media, and they do a lot of the media planning and the media purchasing for us. So All they right. work with content creators to make a media strategy. I, I got you. I got a million questions here. First of all, who's making the ads? Is it you guys making the ads, or is it the user making the ads? No, so we're just a tool. Um, our users make ads. Okay, and so how do they make those ads? They got to be pretty damn good at editing, et cetera, to begin with, right? No, you'd be surprised at what you can do now. Um, but yeah, you do have to be either tech savvy or be willing to put, you know, eight hundred dollars toward sort of a low cost production. And if they want to do that low low cost production, do you facilitate that for them? Yeah. So we have. Um, oh, actually, we don't have it on our site yet, but we've been contacting uh, sort of networks of low budget filmmakers and we can put people in touch with those people. So if I'm in Iowa and I have an idea for an ad but I don't know how to shoot it, uh, you guys can hook me up with someone in Iowa to help me shoot the ad? Yes, definitely. Oh, all right, that's not bad. And then you put it up and have people say, hey, you know what, if I like that ad, I'm gonna put 10 bucks in, 200 bucks in so that you could run the ad. Is that how it works? Exactly. Okay, so it's different people that are putting the money in, different people that are coming up with the ads. It's interesting. How many ads do you guys have so far? So right now we have 16 ads on the website, and they're mostly from pretty major organizations. And today actually is the period right before launch. So we've launched tomorrow, and right now we're having a launch competition. So five out of 16 of these ads will make it onto our website for launch. And there's just an open voting process right now for which of those five ads make it. Okay. Uh, what's, what's the name of the site, by the way? Um, www.socialteeth.org. O-R-G, okay. All right, now, uh, what are in the ads? Is it, is it guys who say, okay, vote for Obama, vote for Romney, or is it, hey, you know, the third district in Iowa, you gotta be believe me, this is the way to go? Um, so we actually don't have many candidates at all. Um, we're working with Gary Johnson, the third party libertarian candidate for president, and he has an ad on our site. Other than that, it's mostly uh, very much oriented around issues. So right now, the ads that have the most votes um, are about abortion. And oh, that's interesting. Okay, pro, yeah, pro life or pro choice? Uh, pro choice. Okay. And. Uh, and they're on the issue of, hey, don't pass these draconian laws state by state, or, or is it specific to, oh, in Texas, please don't do resolution X, Y, Z? So that particular ad actually isn't particularly political in its call to action. So it's kind of pointing out um, what women go through after an abortion and, and try to humanize that issue. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that's interesting. You know, it's, it it's actually goes to the core of what Citizens United, in a massively ironic way, was supposed to be about. Because Exactly. Uh, <laughs> that's where the idea came from. Okay, well, there you go. Because in Citizens United, they wanted you to get out your ideas and be able to uh, put out your ideas. Now, of course, it turned out it had nothing to do with ideas. It was all about politics and, you know, billions of dollars poured in to manipulate people. But the fact that you're trying to get it to go from the uh, bottom up is, is fascinating. So you presented this uh, at the Aspen Ideas Festival. Um, first of all, I, I know you were a student at Stanford, but how did you, was that part of how you got to the Aspen Ideas Festival? I mean, if you have a good idea, how the hell do you get there? <laughs> yeah, so I was really lucky. Um, the design school at Stanford, it's called the D School, they're holding an open competition to send groups to the Aspen Ideas Fest. And I kind of found out about it uh, the, day, the day the competition was closing, and I, I entered in the last hour and somehow was the only non-B-School-affiliated person to sneak into the competition. And yeah, just got really lucky, won it, and got to present at Aspen. And what happens at that festival for people who are unfamiliar with it? Yeah, so um, it's a very odd and, and cool experience. It's kind of like a TED Talk, but on steroids. Um, it's in this very beautiful complex in Aspen, and it's just uh, basically a week of very prominent people talking about either how they've gotten where, they're, where they are um, or about their current work. Um, Eric Schmidt spoke, Lawrence Summers, David Brooks. Uh, a lot of really, really interesting thinkers. Well, one out of three ain't bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then they get to hear you. And after uh, you do your presentation, do people come up to you and say, hey, I'd like to fund that or anything along those lines? Is that how it works? Yeah, so, I mean, it's mostly for general interest. Um, we've definitely gotten interest from funders and have resisted so far. But I got a lot of people saying, hey, I have an idea for an ad. You know, what would that look like on your site? And, um, you know, we're still, we're still chatting with some of those people to help them along. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so what's the ultimate goal here, Elaine? Um, well, I think it's, it's more of a social experiment for me. Um, I'm more interested in, you know, what happens when we give access to big campaigns and professional tools to normal people. You know, what kinds of ads are we going to see be successful? And... Um, you know, best case scenario and sort of my goal, personal goal, uh, is that, you know, at least some subset of our users begin to feel more engaged with politics. You know, there's a big lack of the feeling of efficacy in citizen participation these days. And, you know, I would like to contribute to rebuilding that sense. All right. Now, Elaine, this is a portion of the Young Turks when we keep it real. Um, have as many people as you uh, had hoped for participated in this, or has it been tough to get people involved uh, in this process? Um, yeah, okay, I'll keep it real. Um, it was really, really hard to get organizations and filmmakers to trust us and to put ads up. And so, you know, what you see on our site right now isn't really where I hope um, the content will be in six months. A lot of it is ads that are made for organizations to present their work and to present the problem that their work addresses, and it's less of a video petition or a political message or a call to action. And, you know, that's just our first batch of ads. And just in the last day or so, I've been actually surprised at how much participation we're getting, at least on the voting for ads. So. Mm -hmm. Getting content has been really, really tough. Um, so far, just the casual participation for voting has, you know, kind of blown my socks off. It's great. All right. So one out of two, I hear you. And look, obviously, a huge part of this is what you're about to get into, which is can you raise the money to put the ads up? Because the minute you do that, of course, there's going to be a much greater incentive for people to say, well, wow, if I can get money to run my ads, I got an idea for an ad. Let's give it a shot. And yeah, so, exactly. So that, that's the battle plan. So how long does this continue? Uh, is there a, a plan for, hey, I'm going to keep this running for two years, forever, et cetera? Uh, so what's the current plan for Social Teeth in that regard? Um, yeah, so we don't really know how successful this idea can be. 
And to be really, really fair, um, I should point out that there is another site that's been around for a while, um, which I didn't realize until recently, but it's called Loudsauce, and it's crowdfunding for advertisement, just like Social Teeth. And um, what we're seeing is, you know, a lot of modest success on their end. So, you know, they're funding ads that are on the order of 1000 to $5,000, typically. And what were um, they called? Loud Sauce. Loud Sauce? Yeah. Oh, fascinating. Okay, as opposed to wheat yeah, sauce. Um, I kind of like But, it. you know, we're thinking much, much bigger. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, if we kind of find that we're bottoming out around the $1,000 fundraising mark, then, you know, Loud Sauce has been around a long time. And, you know, they might as well keep, keep up their great work. Um, we're thinking more along the lines of really, really big, overblown ad campaigns, mm -hmm. which is why it's been important for us to work with Aegis, you know, really big media company. So we're talking about an order or two magnitude higher for campaigns. And... Um, you know, if that's uh, successful, then we'll keep going. And if not, then, you know, this was a great experiment to see what could happen. All right. Elaine, you know, I can tell you're a, a, a lib do-gooder. I mean, who met and mentions their competition four times in an interview about your organization? All right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. That's good. You actually want to do good in the world. And, uh, and I, you know, encourage everybody to check out Social Teeth. Uh, I'm curious to see how that experiment's going to go. And, uh, and I love that you got involved in it, even though you were not a big political person. Because, like a lot of us in the country, you're tired of how this is going. So, thank you for joining us, Elaine. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jake. It was a pleasure. All right.